debate on the COP29 and the critical role of local and regional leaders for future global climate action. I welcome on the podium the MV First Vice Chair Kata Tutto, as well as the member of the core delegation to COP29, or their representatives, Josko Klisovic, President of the Municipal Assembly of Zagreb, Jasna Gabric, member of the Municipal Council of Trobrje, Juraj Droba, President of Bratislava Region, Kiara McCarthy, Member of the Court City Council, and Anita Nina Ratilayan, Member of the Turku City Council. Welcome. I also welcome Marco, Marco Marcola, Rapporteur of the Future of EU Climate Policy, Align Mitigation Targets and Adoption Challenges. The vote on the opinion will follow this debate. The Corps participates at uh, COP29 with uh, a seven-member delegation, which uh, the President Vasco Cordero, the honor to lead last week in Baku as part of the EU official delegation. The negotiations are still ongoing, and we have uh, with uh, us uh, Juan Manuel Moreno Bonilla, President of Andalusia, who is connected live from Baku to update us. In Baku, the core leveraged local and other subnational governments' role in climate policy development and implementation through their inclusion in international climate processes and mechanisms. We also made sure to place climate adaptation and the center stage with climate mitigation. We have seen the disaster strategy in Spain and our preparedness to deal with the climate crisis should be at the forefront of our action. The core will continue to make multi-level action a permanent agenda item for future COPs. So, Mrs. Catatuto, you have the floor for three minutes, please. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Yes, I think you've been following us every year after the COPs. Or the, before, yeah, now it's working. Good. Yo? Okay. Super, you hear me. Good. Somebody's taking no, away my voice. Okay, so. It starts early. <laughs> we come here every year before the COPs and after the COPs. We always say what we want to get there, and then we come back. What did we get? We are moving forward step by step. In this COP, I couldn't participate, hopefully the next one, yes, but since Paris, I'm there mostly personally. And we started from very, very far from in Paris, being recognized, our role as cities and regions. What did we want to reach? We agreed on that we want to have our voice there. We want to have our seat there. We want to be acknowledged in the text. We want to be there in the writings. And step by step, cope by cope, we're getting further. If COP is successful, Baku, maybe Moreno Bonilla will tell more about it, what he sees. But what we know as from our perspective, as European Committee of the Regions, we got further. We got into the text, what we say, what we write is there, we're more visible, and I think it's a good path, so maybe we will speed up in the future. So we're on a good path. We'll see how successful this is. And thank you for all the work and all the preparation that was put in it. So thanks. Okay. Thank you, Kata. The floor now is for Mr. Markula to present uh, your opinion. Five minutes. Please, Mr. Markula. Arvoisa puheenjohtaja, hyvät jäsenet, haluan ensin lyhyesti painottaa muutamia keskeisiä tekijöitä koko tässä itse laajassa asiassa ja sallinette, että ensin korostan tämän, tämän COP-prosessin merkitystä. 
Kuten tuossa 30-vuotisjuhlapuessa niin totesin, niin olin itse alueiden komitean presidenttinä Pariisin neuvotteluissa. Ja todella on pakko sanoa, että teimme äärettömän tärkeää työtä, mutta meidän rooli oli paljon heikompi kuin mitä se on tänä päivänä. Mutta tämä kaikki perustuu pitkälti siihen, että koko tässä aihepiirissä ilmastonmuutos, sen torjunta, mutta myös koko biodiversiteetti ja luonnon monimuotoisuus eri tavoin arvioituna ja edelleen luonnon, ilman, veden ja maaperän saastumisen estäminen ja saastumisen vähentäminen, poistaminen niitä ongelmia. Tämä on kaikki nimenomaan sitä työtä, jota me teemme alue- ja paikallistasolla. Ja samoin niin kuin tuossa lausunnossa toteamme, niin mitigation-toimista, siis torjuntatoimista, 70 prosenttia tapahtuu alue- ja paikallistasolla yhteistyössä kuntien ja vastaavien, mutta toki yritykset, kaikki muut mukaan lukien. Ja sitten jopa 90 prosenttia siitä työstä, jota me joudumme nyt tekemään sen takia, että ilmastonmuutos on muuttanut maapallon kaikkia luontoolosuhteita ja nämä valtavat tuhot, joita luonto aiheuttaa joko kuivuuden kautta, valtavien sateiden kautta tai metsäpalojen ja vastaavien kautta, nämä vaativat nimenomaan välitöntä reaktiota aina paikallisia aluetasoja. Tätä kautta tämän asian merkitys on äärettömän suuri ja on tärkeää, että Eurooppa ottaa itselleen sen roolin, joka tietoperusteisesti meille jo tällä hetkellä kuuluu. Me olemme se taho, joka yhteistyössä yrityskentän myönteisesti, innovatiivisesti yritysten tuotteisiin. Me puhumme kädenjäljestä, handprint, eikä vain jalanjäljestä, joka on enemmän kuin katsotaan sitä takaisinpäin, että mitä on tapahtunut. Mutta luomme yhteistyössä kaikkien yritysten kanssa, erityisesti painottaen yrittäjyyttä, nuoria, kasvavia, dynaamisia startup-yrityksiä, jotka todella voivat luoda valtavasti näitä uusia ratkaisuja. Ja tähän meillä on paljon näiden innovaatioekosysteemien kautta ratkaisuja. Tähän voin omalta kokemusosaltani todeta, että oma kaupunkini Espoo, kuten huomasitte, niin olen tottunut, että pitää olla myös evidenssiä, että mitä tehdään. Niin meillä on myös meidän Espoon kaupungin tiekartta, eli konkreettiset toiminnat, laskelmat, dokumentit, miten meidän työmme edistyy siinä, että olemme hiilineutraali jo 2030, niin tätä tässä on sata sivua täyttä faktaa, ja tämän on meidän kaupunginvaltuusto viimeisessä äänestyksessä on yksimielisesti hyväksynyt viime toukokuussa. Toki muutosehdotuksia oli prosessin kuluessa, mutta kaikki totesivat meidän oikea äärimmäinenkin oikeisto, meidän koko vasemmisto, vihreät, kaikki me yhdessä EPPn johdolla, kun olemme tätä työtä vieneet eteenpäin, niin totesimme, että tämä on se, mitä pitää tehdä. Ja nyt me tarvitsemme näiden EU-missioiden, kaupunkimissioiden, maaperämissioiden, vesistömissioiden, jossa on kaikki valtameret myös mukana ja koko tämä Climate Adaptation-työ myös missiona. Niiden kautta tarvitsemme lisää vahvistusta tutkimus-, kehitys- ja innovaatiotoiminnan kautta, mutta ennen kaikkea, että ratkaisut skaalataan ja levitetään muille. Jokaisessa tilanteessa, jokaisessa kunnassa, jokaisessa maassa ne pitää aina myös räätälöidä paikalliseen tilanteeseen ja tätä kautta kansalaisten osallisuus, aktiivisuus ja ymmärrys sille, miten tärkeätä nämä toiminnat on, koska me teemme nyt pitkäkestoista työtä, niin se on äärettömän tärkeää. Ja näitä periaatteitahan meidän delegaatio myös Bakussa on vienyt eteenpäin. Itse olen ollut viidessä COP-neuvottelussa, mutta on hyvä, että uusia jäseniämme aktivoituu sinne entistä enemmän. Mielellään annan sen työn, mutta paikallistyö pitää tapahtua niin, että me tuomme näitä ratkaisuja myös tänne meille käytettäväksi. Ja vielä haluan korostaa, että koko tämän lausunnon kiitän niitä. Meillä oli, oli 77 muutosehdotusta valiokuntavaiheessa, nyt 79 vielä tässä vaiheessa niin olemme voineet ja olen raportoijana hakenut ratkaisuja, jotka nimenomaan vievät eteenpäin uusia 
toimenpiteitä. Emme ole siis vain toistaneet, mitä komissio on kaunista ja tavoitteellista sanonut, vaan haluamme olla mahdollisimman konkreettista. Ja nyt, nyt kuten olen joskus aikaisemminkin muissa lausunnoissa sanonut, että meidän alueiden komitean raportoijien ja jäsendien vaikein työ alkaa sitten, kun tämä lausunto on hyväksy. Sitten pitää keskittyä, että miten se viedään käytäntöön, neuvotella erittäin monien eri tahojen kanssa. Ja tämä työ on se, jossa me tarvitsemme ei vain raportoja, vaan kaikkia. Ja tässä me tulemme sitten etsimään niitä ratkaisuja, joita täällä tänään äänestellä. Kiitoksia. Thank you, Mr. Markula. I now give the floor to the members of the course COP29 delegation. First to Mr. Moreno Bonilla, President of Andalusia, live from Baku for four minutes. Mr. Bonilla, you have the floor. Okay. Muchas gracias, Presidente. Queridos colegas y compañeros de la delegación del COP, miembros del Comité de, de las Regiones, eh, una vez más debo empezar agradeciendo la confianza por mi designación que me ha permitido participar como miembro de la delegación del Comité de las Regiones en la Cumbre Climática de Bakú, así como a los componentes del Secretariado del EMPE por su excelente trabajo. Aquí los gobiernos nacionales continúan negociando no sin, con muchas dificultades, yo diría dificultades serias, para alcanzar resultados que salven los objetivos ambiciosos de esta COP. La cita de Bakú ha puesto el foco en la financiación climática y este ha sido el principal escollo. La Unión Europea aporta hoy un tercio de la financiación, pese que es responsable solo de un 6,5% de las emisiones globales. Y esto envía un mensaje muy claro. Hemos de mantener el liderazgo en la ambición climática sin perder de vista que es indispensable ampliar la base de contribuyente para esa financiación. Necesitamos, por tanto, involucrar al sector privado. Todos los Estados miembros y las regiones europeas debemos ser especialmente proactivos en esto. Pero este compromiso con la financiación solo puede ser efectivo si más partes lo asumen, algo que debemos plantearlo como una línea roja en la Unión Europea. Por nuestra parte, los gobiernos locales y regionales continúan exigiendo y, continuando, y continuamos exigiendo un consenso sólido para implementar lo acordado ya en la cumbre de Dubái en materia de mitigación y financiación climática. Un objetivo sobre los que he insistido y he insistido mucho esta mañana durante mi participación en la reunión ministerial sobre clima y urbanización en la que tuve el honor de representar al Comité de la Región. Se asienta la premisa de que son necesarias más acciones regionales para la adaptación. Pero no podemos olvidar que adaptación y mitigación deben de ir juntas. Los efectos de las danas de Valencia y en mi propia región, Andalucía, así no lo recuerdan. Está claro que las medidas de adaptación conllevan una financiación más clara y transparente, como requieren muchos estados, y esto es un punto a favor. No obstante, el compromiso sobre la mitigación debe continuar siendo firme y no quedar desvirtuado en un debate centrado simplemente en el impacto visual de esa financiación más que en los resultados reales. En estos días también hemos dejado claro que vamos a seguir trabajando para impulsar la iniciativa CHAM. Es preciso que más gobiernos nacionales involucren a sus gobiernos regionales y locales en los planes de acción climática de cara a la COP30 del próximo año de Belén, en Brasil. Ayer tuvo, tuvo lugar un interesante evento en el pabellón de España en el que tuve el honor de, de participar. En él participamos ponentes de varias regiones de la Unión Europea y de terceros países, así como Region 4, con un mensaje unánime claro. La gobernanza multinivel es clave en todo esto. Concluyo. Esta COP se está desarrollando en un complicado clima geopolítico. Muy complicado. Un clima geopolítico que no ayuda a que los gobiernos alcancen consenso e incluso tengan tentaciones de retroceso en sus compromisos climáticos. En este contexto, la Unión Europea debe afianzar sus alianzas y seguir liderando, por el ejemplo, acciones ambiciosas de mitigación y adaptación. Todo nos parece indicar, según las fuentes de la propia secretaria de Naciones Unidas, que la negociación va a ser larga, que va a ser compleja, que estaremos probablemente hasta el viernes, incluso hasta el sábado, intentando cerrar un acuerdo que satisfaga a las partes. Muchas gracias a todos y gracias por el apoyo y la confianza.
Thank you very much, Mr. Bonilla, and good luck for uh, the negotiations. So the floor goes now to Mr. Klisovic for four minutes. Mr. Klisovic, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. Um, I think that uh, our meetings in uh, Baku were very productive and efficient. And they were so efficient we, because we've got very valuable support of ENVE Secretariat, and we'd like to really thank them for that. They provided us with the relevant and up-to-date information. They provided us with relevant analysis. They did all the protocol work, organized meetings and conferences, bilateral meetings. They did a marvelous job. Thank you once again, Andrea, Teresa, Jose, Jean, and above all, Secretary General Piotr, who led the uh, Secretariat team to Baku. And what were our objectives? Yeah, thank you very much. What were our objectives in Baku? First and foremost, to raise the voice and establish the voice of local and regional authorities within UN framework. And we did it successfully. I have to say, in the context of multi-level governance, in the context of uh, national adaptation plans, because in the new draft, the latest draft, we were recognized as local, as local authorities in this context. In the context of new financial goals, where we advocated direct access to funding for local and regional authorities. It's very important for all of us. We advocated more grants, less loans, in order to lessen the financial burdens, the debt burdens for local authorities. We were very active in that respect. Equally, we were active, really, to promote adapta adaptation which was not as on the priority list of the meeting. But for us local authorities, it's very important because adaptation happens in cities and regions. And who better knows what we need to be resilient to climate change than us? And that was recognized by the COP29, at least in a draft, uh, draft uh, final document. And we hope that our governments will support these uh, elements of the final draft document, because if they don't, then we as the Committee of the Regions should act again as unified voice towards our governments. And individually, every national delegation should speak with it, its own government and say, look, look, this is not right. You should recognize the role of le uh, for local and regional authorities in the final document, because without us, you won't be able to implement anything. If you want to translate your words into deeds, you need us. So recognize our role. So believe, we believe that we achieved that. Um, we established very good relations with, um, with uh, local sub-national governments and uh, municipal authorities. This is something like COR in European context. This is in a UN context. So we are part of that group. Through that group, we were voicing our uh, positions. We were drafting common position. The Secretariat did it very well on our behalf as well. And I think that we really made a point which was recognized in Baku. So we are waiting now for a final declaration to see whether national governments and their negotiators will really support our arguments. And as I said, if they do, we will applaud and be part of the process as we should be. If they don't do it, then we should act, all of us, as a COR and nationally. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Kabich, uh, you have the floor for three minutes. Hvala lepa. Spoštovani kolegi, danes vas nagovarjam ko dogoletna članica delegacije odbora regiji na preteklih konferencah pogodbenic in pa predvsem v imenu kolega Vincenta Šoveta, ki se je doležil prvega tedna v Bakuju, preden je odpotoval na Japonsko. No in ko razmišljam o naši poti, ugotavljam, da smo iz navadnih opazovalcev postali bolj prepoznaven glas v svetovnih podnebnih pogajanjih. COP29 je zagotovo prinesel tako priložnosti, kot pa tudi izzive. Nespoštovanje diplomatskih norm strani države gostiteljice in notranji spori v Evropski uniji so zamedlili platformo in pa tudi oslabili našo enotnost. Kljub temu je Evropska unija ohranila osredotočenost na ambiciozno podnebno agendo in dejavno so oblikovala tudi razprave o podnebnem financiranju. 
To vključuje prizadevanja za razširitev skupine držav plačnic po letu 2025 in po udarjanje vloge javno zasebnega partnerstva. Kljub temu, da so mesta in regije priznane v mandatu sveta, pa še vedno nimajo pravega mesta v uradnih pogajanjih. Naša delegacija je v prvem tednu dosegla pomemben napredek. Vincent Šuve je sodeloval na produktivnih srečanih z ameriškimi župani in pa partnerji LGMA, ter se udeležil tudi dogodkov, ki sta jih organizirali tako Japonska kot Južna Koreja, obe sta močni zagovornici ukrepanja na več ravneh. Dvostranske razprave z lasti s partnerji iz Združenih narodov so nas približali tudi formalizaciji vloge lokalnih in pa regionalnih oblasti v okviru UNFCCC. Da bi ohranili ta zagon, pa se seveda moramo zavezati k strukturiranim nadaljnim ukrepom in tudi okrepiti ta partnerstva. Vse večjo skrb vzboja, vse večji podarek tudi na prilaganju na račun blažitve posledic. Čeprav je prilaganje ključnega pomena, ne sme zasenčiti tudi potrebe po odločnih prizadevanih za blažitev posledic. Letošnje preseganje segrevanja za stopinjo in pol še povdarja to nujnost. Brez ambicioznega blaženja samo prilaganje ne more zaščititi naših mest in regij. V pričakovanju konference COP30 v Belemu bo ključnega pomena zagotoviti tudi močno prisotnost delegacije lokalne in regionalne oblasti v drugem tednu pogajan. Pobude kot je čemp in pa ključni rezultat COP28 spodbujajo tudi smisel na partnerstvo med nacionalnimi in podnacionalnimi vladami. Zato vas, kolege iz odbora regi, tudi pozivam, da sodelujete s svojimi nacionalnimi vladami in sprejmete ta model, ki ko pripravljamo posodobljene nacionalno določene prispevke za leto 2025. In za konec še tole, danes bomo v Bakuju razpravljali o prehodu od ocenevanja stanja k konferencam pogodbenic, zamisli, ki jo je zagovarjal tudi poročevalec odbora regi Šovet in so jo že začeli izvajati v Franciji. Druge države članice bi morali biti ob približevanju 30. konference pogodbenic predvsem zgled. Hvala. Thank you. Mr. Droba, you have the floor for two minutes and a half. Please, Mr. Droba. Uh, thank you very much, uh, distinguished uh, colleagues. During my time in Baku, I made it clear that we have to remain mindful of the concerns of our citizens and of those sectors who will be, which will be most impacted. A rapid transition to green economy can have serious repercussions, especially when it impacts the jobs and the livelihoods and the quality of life uh, of our European citizens. While we all aspire to cleaner air and more sustainable future, we need to ensure that these changes are well planned and supported financially and also politically. It is of equal importance that transition to a low carbon economy should not be seen as an obstacle to economic growth. The green measures cannot hamper our productivity, but they, they must be going hand in hand with it. The cost of this transition, both economical and social, is already substantial and uh, the cost will only grow if we don't find the ways to mitigate the impact of uh, these changes to ordinary citizens. Climate policy must be adaptable and responsive to the real world challenges and uh, the challenges that we are facing as regions and cities. We must embrace a technology neutral approach to decarbonization if we are to be successful. Each country should be free to choose its own strategy when it comes to reducing emissions. On that note, I was pleased to see the nuclear energy continued to gain ground in this year's COP with six new countries endorsing the declaration signed at last year's COP28 to triple nuclear energy by 2050. And I know that some of you are very anti-nuclear, but I think it's, it's important that I emphasize this. It is through pragmatism and common sense that we can succeed in leaving better future for the younger generations. And the last note, uh, Europe has been a car superpower. And let's not strip ourselves of this advantage to the fast solutions of the electric cars. Uh, there are two other global players which are not obeying the rules, and we as Europeans must push on them to play by the same rules and by the same book as we Europeans are playing. 
And last but not least, I want to thank the entire Committee of Regions team in Baku for making it really a very fruitful and very good conference. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, the team. Thank you, Mr. Droban. I now give the floor to Mr. McCarthy for two minutes. Please, Mr. McCarthy. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Vice President. Uh, I'd also like to congratulate the members of the delegation and the staff for their tremendous work. Um, it is impressive, uh, Vice President, to see how the COR has managed over the years to enhance its influence uh, in a fruitful and structured cooperation within the local government and municipal authorities constituency of the UNFCCC. Um, three very brief points. Uh, the CORs present uh, at COP ensures our voice is heard, uh, driving the change needed to build a sustainable future. Uh, while we're not formal negotiations, neg negotiators, I am told by our member uh, Andres Griffoy our bilateral discussions with national delegations and NGOs were essential to advocating uh, for a shift from top-down to a bottom-up uh, governance perspective. And only by involving uh, local and regional authorities in global governance can our voices achieve meaningful progress in the fight against climate change. Um, secondly, uh, Mr. Vice President, um, as local and regional authorities within the EU, we have to move on in our uh, local and regional development plans, um, especially when it comes to finance. Uh, we hear clearly the asks of local and regional authorities across Europe. Um, it is imperative that we should put money and efforts into innovation and invest in technologies that will help us achieve net zero, enhance public-private partnerships, create more synergies and less fragmentation of funds, and create a more inclusive governance system and more decentralization um, of funding. The recent negotiations uh, Mr. Vice President at COP have highlighted the critical need for increased climate uh, financing um, and especially channeling those funds to local and regional authorities. Uh, thirdly, Mr. Vice President, it's time for national government to enable stronger collaboration with lower levels of government to put funding where it can, be ha where it can have best added value and, and it, that it entrusts and fully involves regions and cities uh, with definitions and implementation of policies. Uh, to conclude, uh, Mr. Vice President, let us recognise and empower our local and regional authorities. Um, it is through their leadership and through their innovation that we can build a resilient, sustainable future for generations to come. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Ratilainen, you also have the floor for two minutes. Kiitos, puheenjohtaja. Mietin itse, kun puhuimme 30-vuotisjuhlakeskustelussa tänään, että arvasivatkohan 30 vuotta sitten, että tämä juhlaistunto alkaa hiljaisella hetkellä valensialaisten uhrien muistolle. Eivät varmaan arvaneet ja toivon, että mekään emme tai mekään emme ajattele, että 60-vuotisjuhlassa vietetään samanlaisia hiljaisia hetkiä. Toivon, että sinä päivänä ilmastokriisi on takanamme samalla tavalla kuin nyt takanamme on otsonikatu ja metsien harsuuntuminen. Tänään on puhuttu paljon valentialaisista ja uhreista, joita Euroopassa ja maailmassa nähdään. Mutta eivät he ole ilmastokriisin uhreja. Ei luonto päätä hyökätä kenenkään kimppuun eikä raukkasateet rankaista ketään. Ilmastokriisi johtuu meidän tekojen riittämättömyydestä. Emme ole toimineet ajoissa, siksi olemme tässä. Ö, on tärkeää, että alueiden komitea osallistuu täysillä tämän kriisin ratkaisemiseen ja osallistuu siihen globaalien neuvottelujen aikana. Meidän ratkaisuehdotuksemme ovat todella uniikkeja ja tämän palautteen saimme Bakun kokouksessa. Osallistuin itse viimeisenä omana pakupäivänäni maanantaina tärkeään paneeliin, jossa olin ainoa pohjoisen edustaja. Muut pormestarit olivat muualta maailmasta. On todella tärkeää, että tässä ilmastokokouksessa, jossa puhutaan rahoituksesta, päätöksessä lukee, että rahoitusta suunnataan kaikkein hauraimmille ja köyhimmille yhteisöille. Meillä on moraalinen vastuu auttaa myös muita alueita ja kuntia maailmassa. Tämä on tärkeää. Toivottavasti kokouksesta syntyy tällä viikolla päätös. Se ei ole lainkaan varmaa, sillä jos päätöstä ei synny, ei siellä päätöksissä lue myöskään meidän tekstejämme. Nyt on siis aika vielä painostaa neuvotteluja jatkumaan ja päättymään onnistuneina. Toivottavasti hiljaisten hetkien sijaan jatkossa voimme myös juhlia ilmasto-onnistumisia. 
haluaisin ehdottaa tässä ja nyt, että heti kun Euroopassa on ensimmäinen hiilineutraali kaupunki, pidämme täällä alueiden komiteassa isot juhlat sen kunniaksi ja kaikkien niiden onnistumisten kunniaksi, joita tulevaisuudessa toivottavasti nähdään. Koska meidän pitää pystyä myös iloitsemaan niistä hetkistä, kun pystymme tarttumaan tähän kriisiin ja näyttämään kaupunkilaisille turvallista, viihtyisää, onnellista ja elinkelpoista tulevaisuutta. Kiitos. Thank you. I would now like to give the floor to the two members who represented the core in the Biodiversity COP16 in Colombia. The participation of the core delegation in COP16 is part of our overall strategy to make the voice of regions and cities heard at the global level. Mr. Trinka, you have the floor for two minutes. Mr. Trinker is here. Okay, the second one. The second one is Mr. Bieber. You have the floor for two minutes, please, Mr. Bieber. Thank you, dear Vice President, and uh, I hope I can have the two minutes of Mr. Trinker also. <laughs> So uh, I want uh, to appreciate and uh, to congratulate the core delegates uh, to the COP29 and uh, their involvement and work done uh, at this occasion. But allow me to report uh, the other COP, uh, the CBD COP16 for biodiversity that took place end of the October, and I had been there with uh, Mr. Trinka and myself. So I must confess that I am a little bit annoyed that the only feedback by the press from this uh, COP16 is a failure or non-agreement of the financial issue. So that seems to be degrading the COPs to the financial issue. But uh, that's right, but the COP was much more and positive on following items. First, taking finally into account the consideration of indigenous people and local communities. You must know that more than 80% of today's biodiversity is found on their territories. And second, a worldwide exchange of genetic information about biodiversity, stressing that those benefiting from these genetic resources, for example, pharma industry, knowing that more than 50% of our medicine has its source in plants or animals, these large economic actors should contribute to the new Cali Fund with 1% of their benefits in favor of those who take care of this biodiversity. A third uh, important matter is the recognition of the interlinkage of the climate and biodiversity crisis. So the, know that the next COP, the COP 13, 30, will be the COP of climate and biodiversity. And uh, it has been uh, fixed an action plan uh, tackling biodiversity and health. It's clear that intact ecosystems with high biodiversity have a direct positive impact on our health. And fifth, and to, to my, in my eyes, most positive had been the numerous initiatives, actions, and engagement of sub-national governments that uh, I learned uh, in, in this uh, CARI COP. I met more than 40 different cities and regions around the globe with convincing actions to halt loss and restore biodiversity, thus meaning that the power and pressure is very strong and growing from bottom up. This makes me confident that some decisions, for example the Paris Agreement, can be resigned by one well-known administration but the engagements and actions of numerous U.S. states and cities are strongly working on saving climate and biodiversity protection. They will not stop, but are on track and don't need the guidance of their president. And the sixth, finally, I had the possibility to speak at high-level meetings and make the COR well known around the present international delegates, thus underlining the importance role of subnational governance. And uh, finally, I want to thank the Secretariat and the Secretariat, and especially Marta Mansenet, who has been an enormous uh, help uh, in preparing and uh, guiding uh, us uh, through this COP, where I had uh, nevertheless the chance to have a large uh, encounter with the Director General uh, of DG Envy, 
who strongly and specifically underlined her support for the Committee of the Regions in the matter of biodiversity. So you understand that in my eyes, this COP was not a failure, but on several points, a success. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Biber. You, you finish also the second minutes. <laughs> so we will now hear from uh, our members. Uh, Mr. Capellan de Miguel, the floor is yours for one minute, please. El cambio climático está afectando gravemente al sector primario en Europa en general y de modo especial al sector del vino, que suma a la incertidumbre de su producción interanual, la reducción del consumo a nivel global y la pérdida de rentabilidad agraria que amenaza la supervivencia de muchos de nuestros agricultores. Por eso, y dada la importancia clave que el sector del vino tiene para Europa, no solo desde el punto de vista económico, social, histórico, cultural, paisajístico, sino también para muchas pequeñas comunidades rurales, tengan en cuenta que en La Rioja el 60% de los municipios tiene un cultivo de vino. Por eso necesitamos y pedimos buscar y activar todas las fórmulas posibles para implementar políticas desde la Unión Europea que ofrezcan el mayor apoyo al sector del vino para ayudarle a afrontar sus retos presentes y futuros. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Colega Mazzeo, prego. Ok, gracias. Honorevoli colegi. Vi, vi, vi chiedo, non credete, non credete a chi dice che il cambiamento climatico è un'emergenza del futuro, è un'emergenza del presente, lo ha vissuto la comunità valenziana in questi giorni, lo abbiamo vissuto in Toscana negli scorsi anni. La COP29 è l'occasione per trasformare le nostre idee in fatti concreti. Serve la collaborazione tra tutti i livelli, non ci può essere solo l'Europa, non ci possono essere solo gli Stati eh, locali. Non dobbiamo farci fermare dai negazionisti. A volte rincorriamo qualche voto, ma non facciamoci fermare dai negazionisti. Noi abbiamo scelto di inseguire, di seguire una transizione giusta, inclusiva, coinvolgendo tutti, investendo in energie rinnovabili, investendo in leggi regionali sull'emissione zero. Il nostro obiettivo è di fare prima degli obiettivi dell'Europa. L'Europa ci dice 2050, noi vogliamo fare farcela qualche anno prima. Il futuro è tutto nelle nostre mani, non lasciamolo a chi pensa invece di farci guardare al passato. Grazie. Thank you, Mrs. Vecapera, the floor is your, please. Kiitos puheenjohtaja. Minun on pakko kysyä, että olemmeko oppineet viime vuosien ja kuukausien luonnonkatastrofeista yhtään mitään. Ilmaston lämpeneminen vain jatkuu ja sään ääriilmiöt yleistyvät. Meidän on pakko hillitä päästöjä, siirtyä nopeammin käyttämään uusiutuvia energiamuotoja ja uutta teknologiaa. Meidän on pakko varautua kansalaisten kanssa ja sopeutua tähän sään ääriilmiöiden yleistymiseen. Tällä hetkellä COP-neuvottelut kokous on ollut suuri pettymys, mutta onneksi me paikallistasolla toimimme, me kierrätämme. Käytämme uusiutuvia energiamuotoja, sitä teknologiaa, jota peräänkuulutin. Me myöskin olemme energiatehokkaita ja rakennamme kestävistä materiaaleista. Joten paikallistasolla me toimimme, mutta miten valtiot ja valtioiden välinen yhteistyö tästä menee eteenpäin, sitä kyseenalaista. Thank you. Thank you. Member Pereira, the floor is your. Muito obrigado, Sr. Presidente, em exercício. Eu acho que todos nós temos que fazer um exercício de reflexão sobre o que é que andamos a fazer até à 29 COP. Todos nós que temos a oportunidade fazemos intervenções magníficas, com soluções fantásticas, mas COP atrás de COP o mundo está pior e não conseguimos inverter o plano inclinado em que estamos a exercer a nossa atividade. Queria, por isso, desafiar todos, e diz-se que a Europa contribui com cerca de 10% 
daquilo que, que, que são a emissão de gases com efeito de estufa. Quer isto dizer que os 400 milhões de europeus se desaparecessem, o mundo não mudaria a sua rota a caminho da tragédia. E por isso acho que é bom que, que refletamos todos em conjunto se este é o caminho que continuamos a pretender para o futuro, sob o ponto de vista de pormos mão naquilo que são as alterações climáticas. Muito obrigado. Thank you. Mr. Zitelli Ferrari, you have the floor, please. Muchas gracias. Consciente de los retos climáticos que afrontan los territorios costeros en el sur de Europa, la región de Murcia tiene claro que la mitigación y adaptación al cambio climático y la resiliencia de nuestras comunidades constituyen elemento clave en nuestra agenda política. Lo hemos reiterado en este comité en diferentes ocasiones y también como vicepresidente de Clima en la Conferencia de Regiones Periféricas y Marítimas. En este marco, hace unos días, nos unimos a la posición común de cara a la COP29, con el objetivo de reafirmar el compromiso de los entes regionales y locales de codiseñar el futuro de la política climática de la Unión Europea, buscando soluciones concretas en el nivel más cercano a los ciudadanos. Por otra parte, me gustaría destacar la importancia de la propuesta Restor de apoyo regional urgente para la reconstrucción. Se trata de un ejemplo perfecto de cómo la política de cohesión está al servicio de la mejora de la adaptación y preparación frente a los riesgos tras fenómenos meteorológicos extremos como los que hemos vivido últimamente. Una herramienta clave para regiones más resilientes y, por tanto, más competitivas. Tenemos que ser capaces de coordinar todos los instrumentos de la Unión Europea que funcionen de manera eficaz y armónica, desde la política de cohesión a la política agraria común, pasando por el Fondo de Solidaridad o el Mecanismo de Protección Civil. Confiamos en que el futuro, del, el futuro plan de adaptación al cambio climático sabrá responder a este reto. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Mrs. Stark, you have the floor. Thank you, President. It's unfortunate that my dear colleague from Utrecht, Mayor Sharon Dijksma, was not able to make this debate on the future of European climate policy in person. Her drive and determination to work on a just pathway towards a sustainable future continues to be an inspiration to us in Utrecht and far beyond our region. We're entering the final stretches of COP29, and whilst much has been achieved, Some of the more complicated questions have not been answered in a sufficient manner to deliver on the goals of the Paris Agreement. For our part, the ENVI Commission has delivered a well-wrought opinion under stewardship of Mr. Markula, and that underscores the need for practical solutions and the alignment of mitigation and adaptation efforts. In particular, I'd like to call on those that have not done so to follow Utrecht and many other regions and localities present here today to join the EU missions and cooperate more intensively to deliver on the climate-related challenges of today and tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cardalias, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Mr. President, dear colleagues. The Valencia and all over Spain and Europe flash floods are a stark reminder that climate change is deteriorating, posing a threat to all the European nations. As one of the main EU advisory bodies in the regular legislative procedure, our committee must work closely with the three legislators, the European Commission, the Parliament and the Council, to fortify the regions against extreme climate phenomena as flooding. February 19, 2025 is a crucial turning point that marks the commencement of our new mandate. By this time, we must be fully prepared to elevate flood protection as a top priority, engaging actively within our committees by advancing robust legislative proposals and by fostering new financial tools, as for instance, the establishment and adoption of a new European prevention a resilience fund. Dear colleagues, this aim, this challenge, must become our main prime mission for the years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Now the floor is for a YAP. Mr. Donkey, you have the floor, please. Grazie, signor Vice Presidente. Onorevoli membri del Comitato, credo che molti di voi ricorderanno il tragico incidente che nel 1976 colpì la mia città natale di Seveso, quando una nube tossica di diossina fu rilasciata nell'atmosfera. 
Quella tragedia aprì però la strada alla creazione della prima legislazione europea per l'identificazione dei siti industriali ad alto rischio, che ancora oggi è nota come Direttiva Seveso. Seveso è una testimonianza concreta di come la resilienza dell'Unione Europea si costruisca a partire dal recepimento costruttivo di esperienze localizzate. Però questa pratica rende ancora più evidente la necessità di avere delle normative europee che siano flessibili. Le autorità locali, regionali, i territori non sono solo una fonte di ispirazione per le politiche, ma sono anche coloro che subiscono gli effetti di queste politiche. Per un'implementazione efficace io credo che l'Unione Europea debba garantire che lezioni come quella di Seveso vengano tradotte in politiche adattabili alle caratteristiche specifiche delle comunità locali. Noi non possiamo assolutamente sottovalutare le questioni climatiche, ma penso che non dovremmo nemmeno dimenticare le necessità dei nostri cittadini e dei territori con le loro diversità che sono la forza di questa Unione. Grazie. Thank you. Mrs. Von Kalben, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Mr. Makula, for your opinion and bring together the climate change and uh, the protection of the nature. Uh, this is in the world of today not taken for granted. But you know, we are not fully satisfied. We need technology and innovations, yes, and we need the private sector, of course, but we think that this is not enough. We think that there is an enormous need for public sector uh, leadership and investment in climate solutions, too. Market-driven solutions are not enough especially in the agriculture sector, if you think about the small scale and the sustainable working farmers. And at least we are not accepting nuclear energy as a solution for our future. It is not sustainable, it is an expensive energy, and it is risky even in risky times like today. Thank you. Thank you. Madame Altunian, vous avez la parole. Merci beaucoup. Alors pardonnez-moi d'avance de faire une déclaration un peu à contre-courant. Vous l'avez dit, vous étiez à Bakou, en Azerbaïdjan, la semaine dernière. Selon moi, la dictature d'Aliyev ne méritait pas un tel honneur. Nous sommes tous mobilisés dans nos territoires pour lutter contre le changement climatique. Mais qui pouvait ignorer à quelques mètres des réunions de la COP29 que 23 prisonniers arméniens étaient détenus dans des conditions déplorables. En tant que Française d'origine arménienne, je rappellerai toujours que l'Azerbaïdjan mène de façon délibérée et systématique une épuration ethnique de l'Artak et des Arméniens. Alors oui, pour défendre les avancées climatiques essentielles pour nos territoires, mais pas au détriment de nos valeurs et de notre humanité. Je vous remercie. Merci. Mr. Agorastos, uh, you have the floor, please. Η κλιματική κρίση ξεπέρασε και επιπτώσεις της κάθε πρόβληψη. Βέβαια, γκρεμίζοντας βεβαιότητες. Η κλίμακα της αντοχής των έργων αντιπλημμυρικών δεν υπάρχει πλέον και δεν αντέχουν. Η παροχευσιμότητα των ποταμών δεν αρκεί. Και όλη αυτή η κατάσταση οπλίζει το χέρι της, πλημμυρί... της πλημμύρας, των fake news στην πολιτική και της αλλίωσης και δολοφονίας χαρακτήρων πολιτικών και όχι μόνο. Η κλιματική κρίση οδηγεί με μαθηματική ακρίβεια, αν δεν αντιμετωπιστεί, σε μια βιολογική επανάσταση. Χρειάζεται ιδιαίτερη προσοχή, ιδιαίτερο ταχύτατο εργαλείο χρηματοδοτικό για την αντιμετώπιση της νέας κρίσης που έχει μπροστά η Ευρώπη. Η κλιματική κρίση είναι κρίση οικονομική, πολιτική, βιολογική, κοινωνική. Είναι κρίση ζωής γιατί θρηνούμε πολλούς θανάτους και δείχνονται υπεύθυνοι που δεν είναι υπεύθυνοι γιατί κανένας δεν είναι Θεός για να αντιμετωπίσει πράγματα τα οποία δεν έχουν συμβεί εδώ και 10.000 χρόνια. Σας ευχαριστώ κύριε Πρόεδρε που μου δώσετε το λόγο. Thank you, Mr. Markula. 
You have now three minutes for final remarks before we proceed to the vote on your opinion. Please, Mr. Markula. Uh, um, thank you very much. So, just in brief, let me first thank you all, but especially I took a few points on the UTRE, uh, Murcia, Valencia, Oulu, mentioning that we need to accelerate uh, activities, we need to create new solutions, both technology-based and nature-based solutions. We all need that. And I'm very happy that uh, you have all requested even more concrete activities to go further on. Um, let me uh, just stress one thing, that this opinion already includes a lot of both finance, financial and other facts because we want to, this to be a really fact-based process so that we can convince our citizens and potential partners that this is an urgency. It's not, as someone said, so can we still wait? We, no, we cannot wait. And that's why the Europe needs to be very progressive on taking these concrete solutions up on the discussion, on the negotiations. But we need to boost the industry all around, small and large, to find and create these uh, solutions that can be then scaled up. And that's very much the public sector role to encourage, use our financing uh, to get these processes moving much, much faster. Let me here mention two things that has been causing a lot of debate of the Rapporteur's Amendment. Number 11, which is about the technology neutrality. For my, my, I, my understanding is clearly that there is some misunderstanding on that because, for example, we should not let the Chinese or the U.S. companies with one technology to become dominating. And that's why we need to stress that we need technology neutrality on creating solutions. But we need to have a very concrete criteria for that, like sustainability and cost-effectiveness so that it fits to our sustainability policy. That's why it's important in, in uh, Rapporteur's <coughs> Amendment number 11 that we say there the climate neutrality. <coughs> the other one is this. Uh, I understand clearly that we will vote on the, the nuclear, and that's why when we voted in the, in the uh, NVEC Commission, so the nuclear stayed there in a wide, quite concrete format, but now I wanted to come a bit closer <laughs> to some of the others and by stating now and linking this to the Commission's uh, new communication where they looked at what is needed by 2040. So we cannot just skip the nuclear out, and we know that many countries have that in effective use and secure use, and that's why it says now that uh, we should recognize the role of nuclear for decarbonization objectives while underscoring the continued importance of scaling up renewable energy solutions. So all the others need to be accelerated, and that's why I think Thank that you. this compromise would be good. So let's hope that we can get that uh, as in, stated in my rapporteur's uh, amendment. Thank you. Thank you so much.